Yo! Third video. Let's get on and do this. So, um, yeah, f flippers. We, uh, we have our robot here with its currently completely useless, ineffective spinner. I may get around to doing something about that at some point, but, uh, for now the spinner doesn't need to be effective. It just needs to show how to attach a spinner. Anyway, flippers. So, um, there, there are several ways that people do flippers. And, uh, what I'm going to show you is the... What I'm going to show you is the simpler way. Because it, sometimes people use some form of motor, stick it on a gear, and... Uh, <laughs> then you know they put it on a low enough gear that it can actually move other robots and they use that to fire the flipper that is uh, it has its advantages it has its disadvantages one of the biggest things that it uh, one of the biggest bonuses that it gives you is that it lets you have a much bigger arc potentially for where the uh, flipper arm can go but I'm going to go with the simpler version for this because it's just the basic robot and that is using one of these sort of things that already has a sort of hard cap on how far it can go and uh, I, I already mentioned in the last video I'm going to do something in future on spinners specifically, how to get them right, how to get them the way that you want them. I'll do the same thing for flippers. I'll do kind of a more in-depth specialist video to help you get your flippers to actually be how you want them. But uh, for now, I'm just gonna... well first I'm gonna get this onto uh, so I can see that angle is that angle is all right, but it could be better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, do a bit more space management by moving this in here next to uh, the. Uh, Oh, oh. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, I see. Yeah. So, ah, right. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. I dirt this uh, rack and pinion piston here. I uh, uh, was fiddling around with in my own time, yeah, in the background, trying to figure out where a flipper would actually fit in and. So that's why that's there. That is nothing to worry about. That isn't actually in the way. So I don't need to move this to the side. I can have it further back. <laughs> Professionalism, isn't it great? <laughs> now, there we go. Now I can get the uh, <laughs> correct angle on this actuator. So, um, as you may have guessed from the position of the hinge, we're doing a forward flipper. You know, firestorm, earthquake, those sort of bots. The, uh, and basically, what you want from this point is a shape. Just whatever shape you want the flipper to be doesn't really matter much. And you take that shape. And what you want to do is make it nice and big. Because you need to have... You need to have a good deal of weight to your flipper. 
because uh, otherwise it moves too fast and the physics gets confused. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the old. Uh, yeah, I'm going to start tweaking the actual values to get the flipper a little better fitted into the body. Um, among other things to get it not showing too much of the actual bar that fires it. And then I'm going to pull this slightly down just to get the flipper a little better planted inside the shape of the robot. Now we have the actual flipper section. We want to make that, as I was saying, reasonably heavy. Doesn't need to be extreme, but it does need to. Oh, there. I forgot to uh, change the controls, so I've still got the. I'm going to move the spinner onto Z because that is now the secondary weapon. And I'm going to increase the arc of that to the maximum. And I'm going to. There are a couple of ways to do this. Most, mostly, you'll see people set the flipper to controller servo because then. When you fire it, it goes up. When you release it, it goes down. Now, what I found is that that actually moves the flipper a, a bit faster, but also, in my experience, it seems with a bit less power. So what I prefer to do is take that off controller servo so that it properly moves between rather than kind of switching between. But then I stick it on a double throw so that I can have another button that pulls it back down. Just that way I can get the bit more power, but I can also get the quick reset. And uh, I Okay, but this is uh, this is entirely a matter of preference. You can do it however you want. I'm going to move the we the spinner onto X and the reset onto Z, just because I find it easier to control that way. And the mighty crate test. Come on, come on, get under the crate. And it got eaten by physics, as uh, the crates are wont to do, but it did flip. So uh, I'm going to call this a successful flipper. Th there are some more things that really need doing, though, because, yes, the flipper arm works, but... Well, not everything is going to have. Yeah, not everything is going to be as obliging to go up onto it as that crate was. Because this bit here is not flush with the body. And the solution I'm going to show you to that is uh, to add a little bit of extra shape to the robot. 
rather than tweaking the flipper because this way I'm showing you a little bit more stuff just generally so you can uh, so this way you uh, will be uh, a little better prepared to uh, build things other than this exact robot because the idea is I want to take the angle of the flipper that's 288 if I if I make this the same angle and then rotate it that should in theory it, it hasn't <laughs> maybe I need to make that a two oh yeah of course oh yeah because this has been rotated around got it okay so because I had to turn the wedge around the other way that meant that uh, it uh, I needed to invert uh, the uh, uh, the rotation angle that I was using to uh, a two rather than an eight because it goes in multiples of ten you know and but uh, so this means that we've now got a wedge there at the same angle as the flipper. So if we do a little more of the mighty coordinate tweaking, that's a bit too much. I tend to be a little overly precise on these. But I'm actually going to leave a little bit of an overlap there. Just to make sure that the wedge guides the opponent up onto... Sorry. Yeah. Just to make sure that the wedge guides the opponent up onto the flipper rather than just... Yeah, rather than just creating more physics weirdness as it just <laughs> allows them to continue hitting the uh, bottom lip of it. So now, make that steel as well, so it's just as slidey as the rest of the bot. And then, next step is of course to tweak some materials a little bit okay that one isn't really worth tweaking but yeah, the next step is to tweak the materials a bit to uh, reduce the weight again so that it drops back below the weight limit actually I may be able to do that last bit with the sides no, 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 I'm going to have to do it with the top and bottom. No. Now that it is uh, back within the weight limit of uh, yeah, 110 kilos, then uh, it will be capable of you know, potentially entering people's competitions and stuff. Not that I ever will really enter this uh, because it's just the basic robot. But hey, yeah. Uh, I'd actually be. It was, uh, if anybody does. Uh, uh, and if anyone watching this does at any point end up. Uh, basing a robot on this build rather than just on the techniques in the build then I mean, that's fine by me you could enter that if you want although uh, that's probably flattering myself a bit too much to suggest that someone might take my uh, 
you know, basic demonstration of the techniques robot and turn it into something combat worthy. But, uh, yeah. Time to go into the uh, <laughs> demonstration battles, starting with Royal Robbie as always, because, well, frankly, in the current physics of the game, Royal Robbie is basically a punching bag. <laughs> While we're here in the arena, I uh, might as well fill the video out a bit. Uh, well, since. I really haven't had to do much in this video, so I'll fill it out a little. Oh, okay. Uh, it looks like uh, oh, I'll I'll do some more flips because that might have been an isolated incident. It does happen sometimes. Flippers in this game aren't quite properly working yet. Okay, boo. Okay, that wasn't. It wasn't an isolated incident that can quite consistently happen. Okay, uh, well, I won't do some explaining of the approximate physics that work with you know, getting your flipper right, uh, because I've got some fixing of the actual flipper still to do. Also, I just clicked on the wrong menu and slowed things down a bit. But, uh, or actually no, I could probably, yeah, I can do the explaining while I'm fixing it, because what I'm fixing is the same thing that I'm explaining. And that is that when you flip, basically, uh, the, um, w the game does always register the flip as a actual movement from down here to up here or to up here or here or here wherever you want to put it <laughs> the game always registers that as a movement but the speed of the movement determines how fast uh, it determines how well the physics is able to pick it up because the game's physics is uh, well, it's in its uh, early -ish stages. Yeah, you know, this is still free alpha. The um, and so if the flipper moves too far, too fast, then it is liable to uh, end up uh, traveling into the opposing robot before. <laughs> the physics can actually register that it's uh, that it's moved. So you do get into situations where you just start pinging around the arena. There are two solutions. One is to do what I've just done here and reduce the arc of the flipper. But I'm also going to do another solution, which I actually used on my Wheelie Big Cheese build, which is uh, to get a thicker shape and attach that to the underside of the flipper. Because when the game is trying to detect the movement of the flipper, the thicker the actual flipper arm is, the more there is for the game to detect. And so, yeah, the more likely it is that the flipper will actually work, rather than You're just pinging inside the opponent. So I just need to nip back into controls and get that up so that I can turn those 
into steel. And now that should do two things, because not only is it not only is it increasing the amount of thickness that the game has uh, <laughs> to uh, actually register uh, the collision on, but it also is increasing the weight of the flipper just slightly, by about a kilo. Uh, and any increase in weight at all does uh, slow down the flipper and even a little bit of slowing will it will give the physics more time to actually read the uh, collision. But basically, building flippers in this game on uh, yeah, on these kind of uh, motors, the uh, the actuators and the pistons. Is all about finding a balance uh, between the power of the flipper and being charitable to the game's physics. But if you can get it right, then you can get a much more powerful flipper uh, than people can get by using motors. And it's a lot easier to actually construct the flipper in the first place as long as you uh, keep how to build the arm in mind because the mechanics of it are a single component rather than you know an entire motor and possibly gearbox and possibly belt transmission it's gonna need at least one of those and uh, so, right, back to the punching bag. <laughs> yeah, Royal Robbie and Faust really need uh, to be uh, really need to be buffed uh, once uh, yeah, w once um, uh, the devs have finished on uh, uh, what's it called the uh, the replacement uh, damage model. Uh, Oh, um, okay, this is not ideal, but it's better than it was, because, well, this time when I, uh, this time when I pinged inside him, uh, we both flew a short distance, uh, but, yeah, well, yeah, we, we both flew a little bit, but, uh, we didn't get catapulted across the arena, and again, the flipper went inside him. Uh, but uh, uh, it didn't ping us both uh, off you know, into the distance. So it has been improved. It's just a question of continuing improving it that way. I'm uh, yeah. I'm going to uh, I'm going to leave uh, the uh, I'm going to leave this video's building here because well, I've I've demonstrated uh, that the fix is capable of working. Uh, it's just a question of how far it needs to be pushed, and that's more an individual preference thing on how much power you want versus how much control. But what I am going to do is I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to give you a I'm going to give you a demonstration from a robot that takes those uh, yeah, those things that I've been saying about the flipper uh, to extremes. Because yeah, Wheelie Big Cheese has the maximum arc on the flipper. And, uh. Yeah, but 
and so I made the flipper work by doing the whole wedge underneath trick and I also added a whole bunch of extra weight with a fake aesthetic pneumatic ram and between those two things the flipper moves slow enough and the detectable <laughs> kind of collision boxes are thick enough that for the most part it uh, yeah, but for the most part, the flipper it does actually manage to uh, get to work properly without clipping through things. And the result of getting that balance right is pretty spectacular because you can do far more than a motor driven flipper is capable of. As you can see, I'll probably be uh, going a little more in depth into the exact construction of this flipper when I do my flippers video, but for now I'll leave you with uh, a practical demonstration. Ow, ow, ow. Get off. <laughs> Just used Faust as a weapon. Get back up so you can stop struggling. <laughs> Go over there, earthquake. Oh, and uh, since I'm using Wheelie Big Cheese, I might as well uh, mention Wambo. If you happen to see this video, I want to fight your kill a lot. <laughs> That, yeah, that, that is a fight that needs to happen. Wheelie Big Cheese must achieve its destiny. Because <laughs> this flipper can lob a ton a metre and a half into the air. <laughs> Anyway, that was um, Flippers, with a little bit of bonus content. I'll, uh, I'll see you in the next video. Um, bye! <laughs>